Web 3.0, powered by blockchain technology, has massive potential to change the future of technology as we know it. This is self-evident if you've actually sat down and gotten your hands dirty and tried out any of these applications yourself. But as you've done this, you know, you might be thinking, hey, some of this stuff doesn't really feel quite ready for prime time. And you're right. But the good news is uh, there's a path forward where we can actually get this technology ready for prime time so that it can scale to billions of users and beyond to actually compete with Web 2.0 giants today. I'm going to explain how that's going to work in depth in this video as a blockchain developer who works with technology on a daily basis. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step-by-step -step, start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's talk about the future of blockchain technology and how it can actually scale to accommodate the billions of users that it inevitably needs to onboard if this technology is going to reach mass adoption. Well, a lot of the limitations around blockchain technology right now are actually just technical in nature. There are problems that have to be you know, improved in order for this to happen. And I'm going to break down how that's going to work in this video. So I'm going to draw pretty heavily from this article here called The Lay of the Modular Blockchain Land. Okay, this is actually by, I hope I'm saying this right, Paulinia. So I follow this person online. Uh, I just hope I'm saying the name right. They're a really great thinker and communicator in this space to explain this problem. So I want to draw pretty heavily from the article. I'll put the link down in the description below for full credit. So in essence, what is the future of modular blockchains? Because this is really the key key to understanding how this technology scales to billions of users over the long term. Well, let's look at how that's different from how blockchains work right now. So let's first start off with what, you know, blockchains even do in the first place, okay? So let's say that you're just using a blockchain to do basic tasks like send cryptocurrency around and use smart contracts, maybe buy an NFT, do DeFi, okay? Well, this blockchain essentially has three different properties or three different jobs, okay? Execution, so, you know, whenever you send that cryptocurrency or maybe you buy that NFT, you're executing a transaction. The blockchain actually has to process this. That's the execution part. There's the security part. So it has to make sure that the transaction is secure. It doesn't fail in some way. That your funds on the blockchain network itself can't be compromised. That nobody can you know, change the state. And also with data availability, basically, can they accurately read your balance? Can they accurately reproduce, you know, the entire history of the chain and do it quickly so that you can use it in other applications? So all these are things are the main jobs of a blockchain. But one thing that we've come to find over time, and people have known this for quite some time, but uh, it's very clear now, which is any individual blockchain in and of itself is pretty bad at doing all these things really well. So why is that? Well, it comes down to the scalability trilemma, okay? And and the whole idea that any one blockchain uh, doing this poorly is evidence of what's wrong with a monolithic blockchain future as opposed to a modular blockchain future, which is really what this video is about, okay? Here's why a monolithic blockchain design is, you know, won't, won't scale to billions of users. So basically it has to do with the scalability trilemma. Anytime you're creating a blockchain, you're at tension with three different things, scalability, security, and decentralization, okay? So typically you have to basically pick two or optimize for two in order to create a monolithic blockchain that does what you want it to do. So basically, if you it, you can't really have your cake and eat it too. So you can't really have a super fast blockchain that's also secure and decentralized. You're always trading off between one of these two things to get the other. So in a case of a blockchain like Ethereum, for example, you know, it is uh, very secure and very decentralized, but it's not as scalable. You might have those high transaction fees. The transactions aren't very fast. Same thing is true for Bitcoin because they highly value the security and decentralization. And you'll see other, you know, chains that advertise really high transactions per second or cheap transaction fees, but they typically make compromises in security or decentralization. And so how do you get the best trade off of all these worlds? Like at the end of the day, for the technology to actually scale to billions of users, it needs this scalability vector. And it also needs the security and it also needs decentralization. So how you do this is not with monolithic blockchain designs for the long term, but it's actually modular blockchains. And that's really what the future is about. So let me explain how this works. So essentially what you do is you take all these different responsibilities of blockchain, execution, security, and data availability, and you build them into different modules, okay? And you actually delegate these responsibilities to different modules and you specialize. I mean, just, just it's a common pattern throughout lots of different things that, you know, specialization is the key to the best 
outcome for everybody long term. You see it in economics, you see it in other aspects of computing, you see it in the you know, business, whatever. So how would you do that with blockchain? Okay, so basically you take execution and you put it in one environment, you take security and put it in one environment and data availability also in a different environment as well. Or you, you take the area or set it a different way, you take the places where you get the best security and decentralization, you stick them in one environment and you take the place where you get uh, the best execution, you stick it in an environment and then you combine the best, the strengths of all worlds together to get the best end result. So let's look and see how that works. So let's start off with the execution layer, because like I was saying before, the execution layer is essentially the, the part of the blockchain that, that users interact with. You can think about it as the consumer facing layer. So if you're going to go send cryptocurrency in your MetaMask wallet from one account to another, then you would do it there. If you're going to buy an NFT, send the NFT to you, DeFi, you're interacting with this execution layer. So in a modular blockchain future, this execution environment is essentially moving to what's called layer two scaling solutions, okay? So this creates a separate environment where you can get this uh, increased scalability at this execution layer, but you're actually dependent upon a layer one base blockchain where you get this security and you know decentralization and also this data availability. It just depends on the pattern. There, we'll look at some differences here in a minute. But some of those popular layer two scaling solutions for for general purpose, uh, you know, programming and, and developing of applications is like uh, op uh, optimistic rollups. We see that with optimism Arbitrum and also uh, zero knowledge based scaling solutions like zk sync. We also have some application specific ones, but I want to focus primarily on general purpose uh, scaling solutions that any developer can like take an application and move over to, because I think these will be some of the most important ones for, you know, just decentralized mass adoption long term. And now different layer two scaling solutions make, you know, different trade offs and have you know varying degrees of data availability and security. But the good news is that both security and data availability can be obtained from this base layer, Ethereum. Uh, now and also more so in the future. Okay, so let's actually look to see how that works. So I'm actually going to pull a quote directly from the article here when he talks about security of this modular blockchain future, which is basically, this is by far the hardest layer. So at this time, there are only two solutions that are adequately secure and decentralized or even attempt to be. Uh, that's Bitcoin and Ethereum. So most other chains don't see the blockchain Lego tsunami approaching and make crippling sacrifices to security and or decentralization to achieve higher scalability. They're basically talking about taking these layer one blockchains and just making some changes that aren't the best change for the long run, embedding on a mod like a monolithic blockchain future, but he's saying that's the wrong approach, that we have this modular blockchain future, and this is the better way. And so to back this up, he says, so what will it take to compete with an Ethereum security layer? A wide token distribution that can only be achieved from six years of intense activity and high inflation proof of work. So he's talking about the fact that Ethereum, the Ether, the asset itself, has been circulating live for over six years. It's had time to change hands and actually decentralize the entire supply. It's not just doesn't have like, you know, some massive, uh, you know, concentration of holders um, with like VCs or anything like that. So a consensus mechanism, which can handle millions of validators without resorting to in protocol delegations. So what he's saying is basically not having delegated proof of stake, but actually doing proof of stake where you have to run a validator and basically a culture of users and developers running full nodes, focusing on solutions like statelessness to make this sustainable long term. So those are all the things that up, you know, help Ethereum security and decentralization. And also that's how it's going to work with the modular blockchain future. And those are all going to happen on the base layer. And at this time, Ethereum is the best choice for smart contract platform that's going to preserve that with this grand vision in mind. All right, so the last piece of the puzzle is data availability. Okay, so Ethereum, there, there are a couple different ways to accomplish this. There are certain layer two scaling solutions that have better data availability than others, okay? But a lot of that's not going to matter as much in the long term with Ethereum because the data availability sorry, the data availability is going to get a lot better when sharding comes into play. Okay, so one thing you have to understand is the layer two scaling solutions are not necessarily part of the Ethereum 2.0 roadmap long term. You might have heard of Ethereum 2.0. This is a new improved version of Ethereum. If you're using Ethereum today, you're using Ethereum 1.0. Okay, but in the future, we'll have Ethereum 2.0. All right, where it's where it's um, we get a lot of improvements, right? But the transaction speeds are not really like Ethereum 2.0 is not going to in and of itself help us scale the billions of users. We need this modular blockchain future, but we are actually, you know, improving that base layer that we're talking about here to make it better with data, data availability long-term with uh, 
the sharding part of Ethereum 2.0 that's coming over the next probably, you know, year and change. So what is that going to do? Well, it's essentially it's going to break the blockchain up into smaller shards or smaller blockchains. They're all, you know, governed by the central blockchain itself. And so what this does is it makes Ethereum data availability or the ability to retrieve information reliably and quickly from the blockchain much better because it's breaking this information up into smaller clusters and you don't have to have this responsibility, you know, shared by the entire blockchain. It's taking that modular blockchain, you know, uh, idea down to the actual base layer itself and doing this, you know, delegation, this specialization for data shards in and of themselves uh, with inside this blockchain. But he says in the short term, we have Validiums and Volitions, which can leverage Ethereum security while committing transaction data in compressed form to separate data availability layers. So talking about that, basically in the short term, we can get these benefits from layer two scaling solutions. So with all these three pieces combined, we can actually get the best trade-off that accomplishes all the purposes uh, that a blockchain is supposed to fulfill. So this execution, this security, this data availability by breaking the blockchain up into multiple modules that can, you know, specialize and actually complement one another where each is weak, okay, where one is not as secure, it can, you know, benefit from the security of the other components or the other modules security and where one layer is not as, uh, you know, scalable, not as fast, then it can, you know, glue into the other module to help with that. And this is the future that, in my opinion, is what we want for Web 3.0 to ultimately reach mass adoption and scale to billions of users. Because at the end of the day, if we're actually going to build competitive technology to Web 2.0, it actually needs to be decentralized, okay? We can't just make something that's, you know, decentralized and name only because, you know, nobody really wants to build on that future long term if they truly embody, you know, Web 3.0 values. Because the last thing you want to do is built on something that's, you know, has a massive point of failure of centralization because we see this all the time in the business world now with Web 2.0. And that's, we don't really just want to copy and paste that from, you know, Web 2.0, Web 3.0. And this, in my opinion, is the best way to avoid that and create the long-term vision that we actually want to see here. So, hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast at this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Tap University.